welcome back to Arsenal A New Era, Season 2, Episode 13 on Football Manager 2019. And last time out we had Aston Villa, today we've got Man City, quite a bit to get through. Uh, as you can see on our Premier League forecast, it's wages, so I'm guessing that's not going to change, although it does keep switching between green and red. So again, anyone in the comments, I'm not sure if the videos I've mentioned this in have even uploaded yet, because I'm quite a bit ahead on the Arsenal one. But any suggestions you can give me as to what I can do to stop that, if there's going to be implications in the season, please let me know because I need to know uh, but we are going to see probably some big wages uh, leave the club in the summer so hopefully that will hopefully if the damage isn't done or doesn't do too much damage to us next year that will that will certainly help uh, so we're going to cut through to the episodes uh, the progress that we've made since the last episode which was that Villa game we've had a Champions League a couple of ties a couple of league games not a huge amount to talk about but we're getting to that we're in April, end of April now so only a couple of weeks left of the season so we're really at that critical stage you know we've got in a title run we're in a Champions League run so let's see how we've got on straight after Villa we had the first leg against Liverpool way at Anfield and it was not a great result 3-1 loss we took the lead as well actually through Lucas Paqueta on 10 minutes um, it was a very invincible-esque kind of goal in fact what I do I might show it here um, as I talk about the rest of the stuff what happened as it's going on but basically um, yeah a lot of one-touch football in this goal but we'll, we'll see, you'll see it load in a second but they equalised from a corner right on half-time uh, through Virgil van Dijk. And then straight after half-time, Firmino gave him a lead. It was defensive error. Uh, defender just kind of froze, stood still. Uh, while, um, yeah, he just got played through in behind. But you can see great football. Very typical Arsenal goal. Typical Wenger and Vincibles kind of goal. Uh, and then Sadio Mane really did the damage on 81 minutes to make it 3-1. 2-1 we would probably have fancied ourselves but we really weren't in this game uh, we started off very brightly but we just faded away had a lot of players who were starting to feel a bit tired as did they so no excuse but they were probably a bit fresher on the bench and whatnot. but we got the away goal so there's always a chance next up we were away at Bournemouth so another away game another tough uh, travel uh, this time we did rotate if you look at the team it's, I mean, it's still a strong enough team out there but we, we were very rotated because the second leg against Liverpool was only in about 2-3 days so we had to we had to really even though the, the league is the primary objective uh you know we had to focus on Champions League. we, we had a, we had a game we were still in a tie in the Champions League, so we had to go for it and we had the um hang on why is it from the Medeski stadium just noticed that i'll have a look at that in a second um they're playing it in reading that doesn't make sense um but yeah we we did enough we got it's 90th minute we actually got the winner Eddie Niketia uh, coming off the bench to get the goal from a penalty. Uh, was it a penalty? I, I thought it was a penalty, but no, it wasn't. It was just normal, normal play. But they missed a penalty on, on 57 minutes, uh, and we really weren't in the game at all. They were having all the chances, all the highlights, everything. We just nipped up at the end to grab the win. Really lucky. Uh, Jordan Ibe caused us all sorts of troubles. It's 6.8. It's probably a bit harsh. Everything seemed to come through him that they did. They just couldn't score, and even with a penalty, they missed it. But I'm intrigued to know why they're playing in Bournemouth, uh, in Reading. Facilities. State. Uh, this is wrong, isn't it? Is this just a glitch in the game? Due to moving. Ah, okay, so they're moving to a new stadium. The 20,000 capacity Bournemouth Stadium on 24th June 2021. Okay, that's fine, that makes sense. But I don't understand why Reading. It's not really close. You've got Portsmouth, Southampton, all pretty big stadiums. Where they want to pally up with Bournemouth, I don't know. That might be an issue. But surely it's got to be something a bit closer that, that works and fits. Certainly than Reading. I mean, yeah, that's crazy talk. But interesting nonetheless that the game thinks that. But on to the next game. So we brought Liverpool back home for the second leg. And yeah, we just couldn't break through. Uh, pretty even game. Not much, not much went on really. Neither team really did anything. Most of the highlights were probably more in their in their favour. Obviously compared to the league game at the start where we had them a couple of games ago, they've now got Salah and Mane uh, back. Um, is there someone else there? I thought there was someone else but maybe not. Keita possibly. Is he? Would he have been gone for the FK Nations? Yeah, Gin Gin up Guinea possibly. Uh, but we obviously had only back. We only had the one affected so yeah so a big change in the team. So it shows maybe the distance with Liverpool but in, in terms of the league as we saw in the last season, uh, last episode, we were ahead of them. Okay, we got all around them, but we're game, with games in hand. So, you know, in terms of over over a season, we're maybe not that far behind. Maybe the African Cup of Nations did them in more than 
maybe they did us a bit of a mess while they tripped up. Man United were there as well, but we were in the mix, certainly. Two days later again, loving the scheduling in this run, uh, we were home to West Brom. Uh, we didn't rotate in this team, but we did manage to rest everyone sufficiently to, to give us a bit of fitness going into the game. And we had to just use some clever substitutions on some players that were sort of fading out. Um, we took a lead 1-0 through holding on 20 minutes. I think it was originally from a corner, but it, it, it evolved into a normal move. And then he was still in the box and got the goal. Uh, before Mkhitaryan made it 2-0 on the hour just to make sure the game. We did actually push a bit more forward to try and get a bit more of a route going. Uh, I mentioned it up in the last episode, trying to get more goals, certainly out of Aubameyang, but out of the team in general, just trying to dominate and really punish teams, because you look at the stats, that's probably more than a 2-0 game. But we got the win, which is the most thing that mattered, but just a bit disappointing, it had to only be a 2-0 win. I mean, they were mid-table-ish, so that's not, they're not as bad as maybe it suggests. And then the final game today is, uh, before today's episode, was away to Watford. And this was more like it, a 3-0 win. Uh, a very close game, in actual fact. Only three shots on target with three goals. Um, a win in this game, with results going the other way, secured us to take the title. We got our side, but Liverpool, Man United, etc. Obviously got wins in their game as well, so we have to wait another day. But Lucas Torreira on 38 minutes opened the scoring, and then Aubameyang got his goal on 55 minutes, and Socrates right at the end made it 3-0. Very, I'd say with this, the West Brom and even the Bournemouth games, which was rotated, so a bit harsh, but we've not been our usual free-flowing self, and obviously the two Liverpool games as well, disrupting that sort of flow as well. We've not been ourselves. So today is going to be a very tough game, and a win does actually guarantee us the title today. Away at Man City, what a day to be having to do it. Uh, we still have a couple more chances if we need to. Who have we got in the run? But we're going for it today. We're going all out to win that today. So Huddersfield and Burnley. I fancy that we would get at least a win out of those two games. Burnley here. And Huddersfield doing rather well in ninth actually. Burnley in 13th. Neither is really struggling. Uh, I think Burnley could, in theory, get sucked back in. But it's looking unlikely at this stage. Newcastle. I mean, they haven't got an R next to their name. But they look all but adrift. Have they got anyone around them today? They're not in this game week by the looks of it. So I'm not too sure what's going on there, who they've got. But they look to be gone. Norwich, Leicester and Bournemouth got a bit of a fight on that. That's Bournemouth who, who we struggled against. So that's, I mean, that, that could be the stadium playing a part, possibly. Who knows? But yeah, we're going to jump in now for today's episode. We'll cut to the lineups now and see what, who we're putting out to take on Man City. Okay, here are the lineups. I'm actually recording this the next day after that intro because I had a bit of a last minute emergency so I had to rush away but we're back now to record this episode and um, yes yeah, so we've gone with this lineup. we've got Aubameyang up top Mesut Ozil just behind Pereira and Pereira El Nenny Mkhitaryan make up the midfield uh, we've got Klesnach at left back he is struggling so he probably won't last out the whole match but Kozawa is also struggling for fitness and I think it's passed a fitness test but we're not risking him in such a big game ok well, yeah we've got games to spare to win the title but we'd love to, what a way to do it at, at Man City take the title off them in their own in their own ground uh, Rob Holden, Socrates uh, in, in the middle, and Bellerin, who's actually wanted by Barcelona, uh, so we've got to try and keep hold of him, and Leno in goal. Uh, they've gone with Aguero, they've got Sterling, De Bruyne, Mares, so usual kind of front four there for them. Gundogan and Pellegrini in the middle, uh, he normally goes to Chelsea, I think, quite regularly on this, on this uh, foot manager. Uh, they've got Guerrero from Dortmund, they have been busy. Otamendi and Marquinhos have been very busy. Uh, Kyle Walker and Edison, anyone on the bench who's a bit new? Uh, is that Matthew Ryan? I think it could be the goalkeeper from Brighton. It is. That's a very random transfer as a backup goalkeeper. 15 million. If they got relegated, then maybe it makes a bit of sense. Mendy Condobbia, I think he's from... I know he's played for Inter. Was it Inter they got him from? No, he's been to Valencia since. Um, okay, not doing too badly. They've got Wilf Saha. Okay, they signed him from Crystal Palace. 49.5 million and he's played what? 11, no, what, 13 games for them, something like that. One goal, not a great return for him. Might be someone we try and maybe see if we can snatch on the cheap in the summer if he fits what we want to do. Give with Jesus, Fernandinho, and Danilo. Uh, we've gone with Rafinha, Sule, Reese Nelson, Lacazette, Iwobi, Ramsey, and Chambers on the bench. Uh, let's jump into this then. Yeah, so we are, yeah, a win here, or possibly a draw, depending how other results go. Man City on in the title hunt, so either way they're surrendering their title to someone this season. But what a way if we could do it at their ground, it would be absolutely fantastic. 
and saves us two, two games to spare as well, which would be even better. Uh, so they kick off going left to right in the sky blue. We're going right to left in our red, and that's the end of the highlight, of course. So they have the first real actual highlight. It's bouncing around. We managed to get away. I thought it was gone for a penalty or free kick there, but it's... Oh, Sterling back post finds a Tamendi wide. If we can get a counter on, he's very much out of position. But it looks like they're going to get a shot away, and he's buried it after seven minutes. Um, if my voice is a little bit quiet, it's because my daughter is a bit unwell. I want to sleep upstairs and try not to disturb her and wake her up. Plus, my wife's trying to get a bit of an early night as well, and I'll be going to bed shortly after this as well. We, a couple of days, just not a lot of sleep. Um, yeah, so not just try not to disturb. Record an episode or two, and then off the bed, get some good sleep, hopefully. So there's another highlight deep in there, half. Raheem Sterling has picked up a bit of a knock. It looked like De Bruyne was going to give the ball away there, but Walker's instead streaming down the right-hand side, finds Pellegrini inside. They've slowed it down when they had a real good chance to run at us. They've got pace and speed and all that in their team, but a great tackle by Bellerin, just showing why we've got to keep hold of him this this summer. Um, Bamiang driving forward himself with some pace and a shot from distance and width that really wasn't going to trouble them. Uh, it's a free kick, Guerrero will take it, Leno saves, we get the car, I'm not sure how they haven't scored there. Two or three good chances to, to score, um, some goal line technology which, yeah, not necessary. Close than some of the ones I've seen, but not necessary there. Um, we are going to make a bit of a tactical switch. Something I do quite often before going to the striker is, um, is just to change this a little bit and move into channels run from position because they've got a defensive midfield in fact they've actually got two of them so just try and stretch stretch them out of position buy ourselves a little bit more space and in actual fact we're going to make another slight change if it's going to let me uh, we're going to change Terreira to a box to box midfielder as well just to put a more of an option uh, in front but we're going to get into half time here and we haven't really done anything with that one shot by Bamiang. They've had the better of the chances, better of the possession as well. For a team that's struggling down in like, what, 6th or 7th? Um, that's really not good enough. It really isn't. And we should be, even if we're not winning the game, making a imprint on it. We have been quite good against some of the bigger teams this season. Okay, Liverpool we, in the Champions League, we faltered a little bit. Uh, a bit in the league we beat them and okay they had players missing but so did we yeah tough one to take this one we've done well against Chelsea okay who maybe aren't doing quite as well this season as maybe they should be Man United we did quite well who were around us uh, Tottenham I think we've done fairly well against who are around, around, around about there as well and Bamiyan goes close from, from distance just tried to Henri curl one into that far corner but just over the bar so we are going to make those changes now uh, there's been enough time Ozil has been well, nothing in this game really. So we're going to push Lacazette up there. We're going to put a uh, complete forward and attack. I normally switch between complete forward and attack or advanced forward attack. I'm just trying to figure out the best one that works really. And the best players that work for it as well. And in actual fact, we are going to take off uh, El Neni, bring on Ramsey, and we'll switch Ramsey into Rayo. Um, not too much of a hurt there. And who else is maybe struggling or just not playing very well? I mean, Bamiang and Pereira not having the best of games. Um, we might just um, change him up a little bit, inverted winger. Which might actually be more what we look for in that Perez kind of role, maybe. We're going to make some more changes. We've got 10 minutes to go. Nothing is really happening. We're not generating anything at all. So we're going to push Mkhitaryan a bit further forward. Pereira a bit further forward as well. He's going to be changed to... In fact, we're going to sub him out. He's had a, he's not had the best, the best of his games. So we're going to bring Iwobi in. Uh, he's going to be changed to an inside forward on support. I don't know if that's sort of clashing with what we've got out there already. Uh, advanced player on make him on attack for Mkhitaryan. And... We're going to push advance forward on attack. In fact, we'll go with two advance forwards on attack, I think. In actual fact. Um, we'll see what that does. Terreira with a free kick here. Hits the woodwork. I don't know if that's the postal bars or Hars on. 
No doubt he'll score against us. Jesus is on for Aguero as well by the looks of it. Mares is still there, got acres of space. Obviously we're surrendering space now, but we're going for that win. Or that point, rather. And we're going to go very attacking for the... Oh, he's not going to let me do it in time. Nope. Guerrero with a free kick, saved, cleared away by Bellerin. We get a chance to have a counter there, he just put it out of touch for a throw in under pressure. I'm not sure how the other games are going. It looks like teams have closed in on us. Torreira up straight back to Fernandinho, who's also on. Pellegrini, not really troubling there, but that's going to be the final whistle now, I think. It's going to be a goal kick here. No, not even a goal kick, that's the end of the game. So unfortunately, we don't steal the title today. We bottled it at the last game. This could be a real bottle job season, actually. We're going we'll look at the table now and see sort of where that leaves us. So, everyone's on 36 apart from Chelsea, but they're not really in the picture, so we don't have to worry about that. We are four points clear with two to play, so... What's that? Maybe a point needed against Huddersfield, who are next. Tenth as well, so not... Tenth, I think it's Burnley as well as the other team, isn't it? So how did everyone get on? Liverpool drew, so they've dropped down a little bit. I don't think they can do it now. No, they can't. They can't win the title now. It's a two-horse race between us and United, who just smashed West Ham 4-1. Good result for them. And who's there running? Let's have a look who they've got in the last couple of games. Um, Liverpool. Ooh, and Villa. What a game for United to have to stay in the title hunt. And obviously it could be relevant, because if we go out there and beat Huddersfield, good night Vienna. It's, that's the title. But the pressure's all on us. We st well, it's not all on us. It's we know they've got Liverpool. It's a tough game. Um, so, we, but we'll come back for the next episode, and it's going to be that next game, which is against Huddersfield in a week's time. It, it just has to be, doesn't it? Send the assistant there. So, if you enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like down below. It wasn't the best, most exhilarating, action-packed episode for a match at all. So, don't blame you. But please drop a like just to show support. And if you're new to the channel, please drop a sub down below as well. If you've got any comments to make, again, like I keep saying, the last couple of episodes transfers targets trying to rebuild the style of the invincibles again now so looking for players that are like for like with those players i've got a few ideas in mind and i probably will either in the next episode or a bonus episode at the end i was thinking about it depends if we've got another number of episodes need it to get into, into next week then the following week then i might do a um scouting targets uh, or a look through my shortlist and look at my ideas um, going into next season who I might target and do that as a separate episode just a little bonus one at the end just to finish the week off but uh, until next time for the Huddersfield game where hopefully we can steal the title seven days time I'll see you later take care